Hazretlerinin ahir ve akıbetleri hayrola. Ağabey Esma Hazreti Ahiret Evladu Resul Esra'ın bizim efendilerimizin sayı Enbiya Ezzan ve Resulü Fiyan Hazreti Nerva Şeriflerine Birimiz Bilal ve Hamiş Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Sahih Hüseyin Şahdül Kerime Kürbüsler Rabbani Hazretlerinin Hala Hüsus Mücamirin Bahanesi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman ve zin kaynılarının ve kahve ehli iman nervahı için Allah rızası için el Fatiha Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allah'a ve meleketen ve yüksellüne alem nebi Ya eyvelesine ve yüksellüne aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala seyyidina Muhammed Allah'a ekber Allah'a ekber Allah'a ekber Sayyidina Muhammedin abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluh sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zuvacihi ve ashabihi ve tabi khulafa rashin bahadin min ba'di ve zammati ala tahkik huzm halamati khulafa rasulah ala tahkik umar al-mu'minin Hazreti Ebu Bakr ve Osman ve Ali ve Allah bakri sahabat tabi'in rividuan Allah ta'ala alihi majma'in Ya ayuha al-mu'minul hazirun takullah ta'ala ta inna Allah amal ladhina takul ladhina hum muhsinun Elhamdülillahi rabbil alamin Salatu ve selamu ala şerfi anbiya mürselin Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes All praises are due to Allah Who created our father Adam alayhi salam From water and clay with his divine hands And then blew his holy breath into him And put him in ahsani taqwim All praises are due to Allah who has honored the children of Adam. All praises are due to Allah, who has sent his Habib, Sayyidina Muhammad as the Sayyid of Bani Adam. And may all peace and blessings be upon the Imam of the Prophets, the Master of the Messengers, the Intercessor of the Day of Judgment, the Owner of the Maqam al-Mahmud, the Beloved of Allah, Sayyidina Muhammad and upon his noble family and blessed companions, Especially upon the four Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya ayyuhal mu'minun, O believers, we are giving endless thanks to our Lord Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, who is letting us to live in these holy days of Shaaban, who has led us to pass through the blessed night of Barat. We are standing at the doors of Shukur and Tawbah when asking for his acceptance and pleasure and to reach to the Sultan of the months, the month of Ramadan, inshallah Rahman. Believers, what is moving us? What are we living for? Are we living for something? Or are we moving through this world heedlessly like animals? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us as Bani Adam we dishonor ourselves when we live like animals. He subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Quran al-Karim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and definitely 
definitely we have created many of the jinn and mankind for hell they have hearts that they don't understand with they have eyes that they don't see with and they have ears that they don't hear with they are like cattle no they're even more astray more lost those those are the heedless ones and the interpreter of the Holy Quran Imam Al-Qurtubi is explaining this saying because they are not guided to a good deed they are like cattle their concentration is eating and drinking and sleeping even more they are more misguided because cattle they know their benefits and their harms and they follow their master the people in this ayat they're not even like that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not create us to eat to drink to sleep to procreate and to die he did not create our father Adam salam, with care and with time and with attention for that reason we have a reason for being here and it is our duty to find that reason Mawlana Jalal Din Rumi Qadassallahu Sir is saying there is one thing in this world you cannot forget to do if you forget everything else and you do that one thing you have nothing to worry about but if you remember everything else and forget that one thing then you have done nothing in your life it's like a king has sent you to do a job and you do a hundred other jobs but not the one he sent you to do that work is your purpose and it is specific for each person if you don't do it it's like you take a priceless Indian sword and you use it to slice rotten meat it's like a golden bowl being used to cook turnips when one ounce of that golden bowl could buy you a hundred cooking pots it's like taking the finest dagger and nailing it into the wall to hang things from you will say but look I'm using the dagger is not just sitting there do you hear how insane that sounds for one penny you could get an iron nail to hang things on you say but I spend my energy on high things I study fiqh and philosophy and logic and astronomy and medicine and the rest but why do you do this these are all just branches of yourself remember the deep root of your being the presence of your Lord give yourself to the one who already owns your breaths and your moments if you don't if you don't you will be like the man who takes that dagger and nails it in the kitchen wall to hang his ladle from you'll be wasting valuable intelligence and forgetting your honor and your purpose and the friends of Allah speak the truth so we have a purpose Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us he is telling us that purpose Sahib al-Sayyif is explaining the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us for his service and he's saying to us I have created you and the jinns only to know me and to worship me the main reason of man's creation and worshiping is in this dunya it is not in ahirat worshipping to Allah is here in the world Allah is ordering us to know him inviting us to know him he is sending messengers to us to teach us who he is and who we are and the only way to know Allah we must follow the footsteps of the prophets the secret behind our reason of creation it is in following 
the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and in submitting to those who are his inheritors, who has authority over us. This is the divine protocol given in the ayat of Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger and your rightly guided leaders. There was a time not that long ago when we were living for Allah's sake. We were not living for dunya's sake. There was a time when people woke up thinking, how will I make my Lord happy today? There was a time when people would come home and they would look at the calligraphy on their wall that said, what did you do for Allah today? And they would run to work more in the way of Allah. They have the love of Allah. They feel the love of Allah. And Allah is sending them that love to their hearts. And it is what is keeping them alive. It's not like today. We have fallen into full worship of our own ego. We have become, every single one of us, tyrants who care only about our immediate comfort and satisfaction. No, these were people who gave themselves completely to Allah's service through the service of his Habib and their friends. Such people are described, Allah is describing such people in Surah Al-Baqarah when he's saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim and there is a type of man who would sell himself and there is a type of man who would sell himself, seeking the pleasure of Allah. And Allah is full of kindness to his servants. You read. Ah. Trying to be Ottomans. We've just passed through the Urs anniversary of such a high individual who fits to the description in that ayat, Sultan Mehmed Fatihan, that as a child, he heard one hadith of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and that hadith lit his heart up with passion and he ran to fulfill that hadith. Verily, you shall conquer Constantinople. What a wonderful leader will her leader be, and what a wonderful army will that army be. He was only in his 20s, only in his 20s when he fulfilled that hadith. Murids <coughs> cannot even conquer their own laziness. Our Shaykh, who is one of, one of the grandsons of Sultan Mehmed Fatihan, is saying, turn the pages of history and look back. Sultan Mehmed Han, and so many like that one, he conquered Istanbul when he was in his 20s because of one word of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. 20 years of his life, he concentrated on that one word and he conquered. He has brought end to a wrong lifestyle. He has brought end to wrong laws. Check the history book saying 1453. What happened? The end of Roman law. What begins from that time? They are scared and ashamed. Europeans and Americans, two proud ones, to put it in their books to say, the ruling of Islam came to teach us how to live like humans. Yes, Islam came to Europe to teach men how to wash themselves. Yes, Islam came to bring soap to them to wash themselves. Yes. But everyone is scared to talk this now. Sultan Mehmed Fatih, he had a goal. His goal, it was not for this dunya. It was not for his children, or his wife, or his family. His goal was to take the words of Fahri Kainat and turn them into a reality. He was continuing the mission of the Prophet. And he had people around him who recognized his passion. And 
they helped him to grow. He had his father, Sultan Murad, who made sure that his son was educated and trained properly, that his son was properly educated and properly trained. Not the education system of the shaitans and Dajjal in these days that Muslim parents are running to get into. And who trained and educated Sultan Mehmet Fatihan? Look at the paintings of the conquest of Istanbul. Always next to Sultan Mehmet Han, you will see one beautiful looking man with turban and white beard. That is his Mushid, his Sheikh. Sheikh Aksham Suddin. He was teaching Sultan Mehmet from the age of a child and raising him to become Fatih, the conqueror, the opener. Sultan Mehmet said, everyone shakes when they see me, but I shake when I see Sheikh Aksham Suddin. What do we shake for these days? Ask yourself. We have lost this today for our children. We are not giving our children into the hands of those who are beloved to Allah. We are giving our children to the hands of strangers. So many times kafirs to be raised without any purpose. Or the purpose is just for the ego. We are letting our children to be raised like grass, like cattle, growing in any direction without any cultivation. And we think just by putting them through one week, one day in a week to the masjid, putting them through training to memorize the Quran like a robot, the iman and the faith and the love of Allah will grow in their hearts. The Ottomans, when they were raising their children, they were raising their children like roses, with so much care, checking the environment, checking the food, checking the education, checking their friends, checking the community around them, checking their hearts, checking their ambitions, checking their visions. Yes. Grass, its only purpose is to grow and to get cut. But the rose, it enters into the turban of the Sultan. And Sultan Mehmet, he did not let anything stop him in his aim. Even the mountains could not stop him. Shah Effendi is giving us the history, saying, what did Sultan Mehmet do? What did he do before he conquered Istanbul? He dragged the ships over the mountains. He dragged the ships over the mountains and he brought them to the sea. That's why the Byzantines were shocked next morning when they saw the ships. Because they never expected that the ships will be on that side. It was impossible for ships to come near even to that big chain link that they put in the sea. And it was impossible to cut it also. When they said that to Sultan Mehmed Fateh, he said to them, So, if we cannot go from the sea, then what about the mountain? We have a mountain. Move the ships over the mountains and bring them to the other side. Everyone was shocked. He said, Yes, I'm giving order. Tonight, everything has to move to the other side. And they moved. 73 pieces of ships. Like today's ships, very huge ones. They cut big logs from the mountains, they put it on the ground, they brought oil, they put it on the logs, tied the ships to the soldiers, and all these things, they pulled it to the top of the mountain, they dropped it on the other side of the sea, and slowly they entered into the sea overnight. Ashk will make you to do crazy things for the sake of Allah. Ashk will never let you to be lazy. It will never let you to be in gaflat. When you are in laziness and gaflat, check, there is no more ashk there. Ashk can move the ships over the mountains. Ashk can split the moon into two. 
ashq can turn the world from kufr into iman. And what did Sultan Mehmet Fatih do when he entered Istanbul? Did he sit on the throne and make everyone kiss his feet and say, I conquered you, you are mine? That is European way. That is kafir way. We are Muslims. Sultan Mehmet Fatih went straight to that great house of Allah. At that time, it was a church the biggest church in Christianity, the Hagia Sophia, that its foundations were built with the same holy spit from the Prophet ﷺ, that the Prophet ﷺ put his eyes on that church saying, it is ours and we will come to conquer it. Centuries later, it's exactly as it happened. But not because it's just a miracle, because Sultan Mehmet Fatih Han, he ran for it. Don't think that he was the only one. From the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there were hundreds of campaigns to conquer Istanbul. From the time of Hazrat Osman to Hazrat Muawiyah an, to all the other sultans, they ran to get the praise from the Prophet. The Ottomans themselves, they ran. But this honor was only given to Sultan Mehmed Fatih. What did he do? He went straight to that house of Allah, Hayya Sophia, and he made two records of shukur, and he got up. When he got up, he saw that all the people of the city, they were all putting their heads on the ground out of fear to him. And he said, get up. I am Sultan Mehmet, and I'm telling you that all of you, your lives and your freedom is protected. Just like Holy Prophet ﷺ, when entered Mecca, he said to the people, I say to you what Yusuf ﷺ said to his brothers, have no fear on this day. Go, because you are all free. This is Islam. And the root of Sultan Fatih's service, the root of that, it was the love of the Prophet. That is why he could sit and he could write these words because of his ashk of the Prophet ﷺ that is burning him. He said, if a fire is going to burn me from my heart, if a fire is going to burn me from my heart, let the fire of your love burn me. If my heart turns into ashes, other than your love, I don't want this heart. I don't want the fire, and I don't want the cinder. The oasis in which I haven't seen you should belong to the Bedouins. I want your desert. I don't want water. If it's going to reach you, I will not stop. I will walk. I don't want the direction that doesn't reach you at the end. I don't want that road. I volunteered myself as your slave. I have pierced my ear in servitude. I will pass 1,000 Sinai's at once if it is going to conquer your heart. Otherwise, what is it to me? I don't want this conquest. I don't want Egypt. I don't want the world. 
I'm Sultan Fatih. In front of Istanbul. I could burn this city down just for one smile on your face. If it doesn't make your rose face smile, I don't want to be Sultan. I don't want Istanbul. I'm like a strange Yunus. I'm writing about you. I'm burning for you. I don't want the pen without your love. I don't want the paper. I am your Ummati. You are my master. I don't want any other master but you. I don't want any beloved other than you. I don't want. This is the month of that beloved master. We should fall down in sajda and beg our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to plant that love in our heart. Because that love for a believer, it is his beginning and his end. That love is a light in this world, in the grave and on judgment day. The ones who love the Holy Prophet wasalam, he loves them. One day, Habibullah wasalam, was crying. And his Sahabis asked him the reason. He said, I miss my brothers. They said, aren't we your brothers, Ya Rasulullah? And he said, no. You are my companions. My brothers are those who will come after me and they believe in me without seeing me. All believers find one who has finished himself in the love of the Holy Prophet and follow him. Then you will connect yourself to that golden chain that will never break. It will be a safety for you and for your family and for your generations in this life and the next life. Ya Rabbi, in these holy days of Shaban, we're asking to live for your sake and to die for your sake. We're asking for your love, for the love of your Habib, and for the love of the ones you love. Let us to be in that association this life and the next life. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له من كان لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنك صالح لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك 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 إن دين إن الله الإسلام قام صلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله بشر بن محمد رسول الله بشر بن محمد رسول الله يا للسلام يا للسلام يا للفلاح يا للفلاح وقامت السلام وقامت السلام الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا